A three, two, one. All right, we're live. Okay. So, Kashif, how are you? <laughs> awesome, awesome, Sunny. Uh, so, we've been trying to set this th thing up for the past couple of uh, months, maybe. And we, but because of certain, you know, since our schedules have been quite, uh, you know, tight. So, me and you. So, uh, so finally, we are here. So, I'm, ha I'm glad, I'm happy that eventually it's happening. Yeah, as am I. As am I. And so, uh, so yeah, just to again, call out that uh, the pink elephant. So this is our first time actually, you know, having a proper conversation. Yeah, obviously yeah. been following your Twitter handle for some time. And we've exchanged some DMs here and there, but really excited uh, to, 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 to have this conversation with you. So, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, yeah. So, so where should we begin? You know, where should we get, begin? I mean, I would love to know, you know, about you. I mean, aside from, yeah, you know, yeah, all the Bitcoin uh, ness, like w what's your story? <laughs> <laughs> so, so everybody, uh, everyone has a story. I mean, whosoever enters into this space uh, got introduced by well, maybe one of his friends or through social media or through somebody, but but I, we actually ran a tweet a uh, couple of months back that where we tried to ask people that uh, who bought them, in, you know, introduced them into this industry. So, so I think close to 40% people uh, acknowledge this fact that 40 to 45% people acknowledge this fact that their friends, they introduced them to this in industry. So similarly, in my case, uh, it was my one of my friends. So prior to cryptocurrency, uh, so I basically I was into sales and marketing. Right. So I'm a sales guy and uh, later on evolved as a marketing guy as well. So I am, I was working with uh, the media industry, right? So I started my career in uh, 2005. So it's close to 15 years of experience I have in, in sales and marketing. So till 2016, I was into uh, media sales, right? So I was selling advertising packs. I was selling, you know, distribution packs. So I was basically working with best of companies like Sony Entertainment Television, Sony Pictures, UTV, which is now Disney. So I was working with them. Plus I've also worked with um, uh, companies like Pepsi, uh, Shopper Stop, India Mart. So these are the companies where I've worked, worked as well. So it's been close to 15 years of experience sales. So, so one fine day, one of my friend, while we were traveling, uh, just showed me one application where it was basically Zeppe. And during those times, it was only uh, Uno coin and Zeppe, but he was using Zeppe. So he said, uh, look, look at this thing, Kashif, this something new has arrived in the market where, you know, it, it, it goes like, you know, you put 10,000 rupees and you sleep and next day you, when you wake up, it becomes 12,000 rupees. So I thought it, these kind of stuffs are Ponzi schemes. So don't introduce me to the, because, no, no, this is not Ponzi. This is changing the world. He was not able to convince me much, but then it, I was able to see the app and stuff like that. And I got a little curious about it. When I came back, I didn't show him much of the, much of interest, but I started, there was this, you know, the, this thing, which I wanted to learn more about this technology. And well, I came what back. Time, where are we now? What day or what month? Yeah. So it was basically, uh, uh, it was October 2017. Got you. Okay, uh, October okay, 2016. October 2016. Got sorry. you. Okay. So in October 2016, he introduced me to that, and I was going. And I came back. I studied, and while I was studying it, I got so much uh, fascinated by Bitcoin that I called up my friend and I said, "You were telling me a bullshit story." This is not what you were telling me, right? So he said, now you now you will teach me. I said, yes, you have not studied it well. You were just telling me one part of it. This is something else. We need to sit. Then we sat down together and uh, he said, boss, you should invest in that. And I said, okay, fine. I invested 5,000 rupees. So this is like 5,000 rupees mm -hmm. I, I in a, And then mm. uh, I was convinced that I'm now going to go all out in it. So you won't imagine that... Uh, in the month of December, I took a personal loan, right? I went to my banker. I said, what is my net worth? He said, why you want to ask that question? I said, tell me how much you can pay me. So he said, this much. I went to another bank. So, so finally, one bank said that we'll charge high rate of interest, but we're going to give you this much. I said, okay. And I invested uh, in 2017, uh, took a personal loan, took a huge risk. I was so convinced that I am taking the right step. Right. And obviously after the study, but obviously uh, that was also the time when there were a lot of Ponzi schemes, which are running in the market. 
right so the same mm-hmm. friend came to me and said this is not where we were supposed to land up let's invest in this scheme this in scheme is giving so much so in return so i i started uh, studying that ponzi scheme as well and you won't imagine during that time that scheme was being promoted by the best of tv stars best of media and that that ponzi scheme was creating a lot of buzz and a lot of news in the market and though i was not thoroughly convinced but still my childhood friend was convincing me i said okay let's take a chance and i invested all my btcs into that ponzi scheme so in 2017 i bought btcs and by the time 2017 ended i was already invested into a ponzi scheme that ponzi scheme returned me some 5% of what i invested and after that it it vanished my emis were due i was paying a huge emi because i i thought that the way bitcoin was supposed to grow i had a plan that i will take it for a shorter span with a higher emi so there was a time that 50% of my salary was going to my emi and i was completely toasted off my family everybody came to a setback i was into a little depression as well i will i will certainly agree to that and i accept i don't have sh- any shame in accepting that fact that anybody in my place would have would have gone to that but just that i had a 15 years of experience plus a little bit of other savings as well so i was able to manage myself my home expenses but during that time i was into a depression so i went to a lawyer to get my funds back and that lawyer that advocate turned out to be the co- co-founder of crypto kanun right so i went to him i knew him personally and i said look i have been cheated and this is how it happened he, so first he laughed he said you're such a learned person you know by face i can make out so if you got cheated imagine the plight of the normal individuals who are there in this industry the so he con- i had to convince him about that bitcoin is not wrong it's just that the people who are running a ponzi scheme they are wrong so we need to fight it out we need to somehow so from there we got this idea that he said that okay fine i don't know that we will be able to recover this money or not but let's do one thing uh, i convinced him that you know whenever there is some news or we can do some take some initiative where we can help the normal individual understand that this industry is not say there are couple of bad actors you need to figure them out and we need to educate people about it so from there this slowly and steadily this idea came into existence and it was all coincidence that on 6th of april uh, rbi came up with a uh, ban right on banking ban and on 6th of april uh, my co-founder uh, mohammad danish he wrote an article explaining the entire nitty gritties of that bank and and he we were the first one to tell that this, this bank this ban is unconstitutional right and that article became uh, you know it was trending basically on medium so we posted on medium and then suddenly that article was picked by ccn right that news media outlet so from there we came into existence so we didn't we didn't knew from where to start so we so we decided a name crypto kanun we originally our name was bitcoin india legal.com we came up with this domain name but we thought yeah this is becoming a little too long so then we thought of eventually we we found crypto kanun and we started with the uh, twitter we didn't know how to use twitter and uh, we took a tutorial from youtube so for the first time i used twitter on crypto kanun we didn't know how to use it we started using it we didn't know even how to read what is the meaning of retweet we had to actually understand all those things so it was nothing planned today i'm sitting in front of you it was not planned at all i didn't i didn't knew about this industry i didn't wanted to enter into this industry after the setback i wanted to exit but then i had this this thing in mind that if something wrong has happened to me so let's educate people about uh you know the bad actors and how they should safeguard themselves and since then i think there has there has been a lot of change crypto kanun has actually added a lot of value and people have appreciated our work and uh, this is a this is a great achievement uh, i think uh, we are very happy and satisfied that we were able to add value to this ecosystem and whenever the history will be reviewed because ultimately crypto is going to flourish and we all know that right today or tomorrow so but whenever people will look back to the history that from where it started 
I think crypto kanun uh, name will be remembered for quite a long time. Like Uno coins uh, is remembered for their uh, for their in, uh, achievement and for their uh, timing when not not many people knew what is Bitcoin and they introduced Bitcoin to the country. So so that is how we think that we should be uh, remembered by people for our contribution. So that wow. is a long yeah, yeah. story hey, short. Just, just because a lot of my kind of, I don't know, people that I know and followers and stuff are are kind of from around the world. Mm-hmm. Can you explain Kanun? Yeah, so Kanun means law. So basically in, in Hindi, uh, so Kanun is not even a Hindi word, it's Arabic. So Ara- in Arabic, uh, Kanun is, called, is known as Kanun, Q, Kanun. So the same thing as uh, because Hindi is has been adapted by from Arabic, Punjabi, and you know, so Kanun means the same in Hindi and Arabic. So, but primarily it is a Arabic word, Kanun. Interesting. Kanun and, 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 and did you say your background is not of law, right? You said you're more from a sales. Yeah. So, so basically, you're uh, co-founder. Yeah. Of that uh, yeah my, so, so you're like the okay. So, so crypto Kanun uh, is a very organic uh, and a very coincidental kind of a. Uh, so it's like uh, crypt. I am the crypto face i talk about more about crypto and kanun is handled by my co-founder so it's a very organic relationship where he talks about regulations and and whatever i speak he he does that vetting part and he does the research part that this is these are the developments now you can as a media outlet you can speak about that so whenever i speak anything on regulation that is completely verified and uh, by by danish Okay, interesting. So actually, my, my you already started talking a little bit about it. My first story was my first question was what's your story, which I think is pretty fascinating. Thanks for sharing that. My second story was going to be about you know my question was going to be about what is the kind of the story of Crypto Kanun. Like you, you you kind of talked about how you guys started this company from a place of pain, which by the way I think yeah. is always the best, best place best to place. to search for for ideas yeah. um, when people are looking to start something is it solving a problem in your own life. Yeah. Um, you know for a fact that if you solve that problem, there'll be at least one customer. Yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not guessing, right? And so so I think that's that's a beautiful story. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just curious, like you know, I've been following, like I said, Crypto Kanun, um, and I think it was through Twitter, or YouTube, yeah. maybe both that that you guys. Kind of came into being but uh can you talk more about that and like because you guys went from just learning and creating a company to almost uh you know being the the voice piece for for the entire industry for for some time right like it's yeah. the, the actual kind of voice of what's happening on the ground on, uh, you know to the tweeting literally word for words i'd love i want to hear that <laughs> yeah, yeah so basically what happened that uh so people have a lot of expectations from us first of all so what they 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 think that uh, being from crypto kanun and uh, there is that positioning which has happened in the mindset of the crypto community that these guys uh, are well versed with regulation right they have the knowledge they are the only ones who are who, who they, when they write something when they tweet something that information is verified that information is coming from an expert so what happens that you have blockchain expertise you have crypto expertise you have wallet expertise you have ui xi designer similarly regulation is also an area of expertise let's accept it so what was happening earlier whatever regulatory news which was coming in the market that was decoded by people who are not expert of educa- uh, of regulation or legal side right so this was for the first time that crypto kanun a platform came in where they were trying to decode a regulatory news through an expert lens that what what does it mean so that kind of you know has uh, uh, so we feel that pressure we feel that there are a lot of expectation from the community and a lot of that that respect is visible right so we uh, what happened that our turning point was when we were tweeting about the latest updates what was happening and so this uh, rb versus crypto case was already there in the court right now what was happening the mainstream media you know uh, they have the access earlier what was happening so they were the only people who had the access in supreme court so they used to give live updates information from from supreme court but they were least in interested in a crypto case so they were not covering it so we thought how to get that live reporting from the supreme court premises 
to uh, you know on twitter people think that it was very easy let me tell you it was very tough it was very tough i tell you what happened so when we decided to do that so every day so it doesn't happen that if court is sitting today so the case will be heard on that day itself it doesn't happen so there could be that you know the judge is not there there could be some other issue there could be uh, that the previous case which was being heard is rolling over to another day then another day then you are just waiting that hearing to get over then your number will come so on website if it is saying that tomorrow the case will be heard it is not sure that the case will be actually heard because you never know that the previous case might roll up to again so every day we used to go to court now when you go to court it, it doesn't happen like that in movie we have seen that sunny deol is shouting and and the judge is uh, audible it doesn't happen like that so the hearing is happens you know you know so the room is packed so if you have to hear what the court judge is saying and what the what the advocate is what the counsel is saying you have to be in that front row of of the entire sitting right so if you really want to hear what is being said so since we we because we were the only because danish is an advocate in high court and supreme court so he had that access in in that front rows right but wow. but only those people people are allowed to sit in the front rows uh, who have the live case which is being discussed today that on that particular day so if if you even if you are an advocate and if you don't have a k interest in that case right if you are not an advocate in that case or you are not in counsel or you are not on counsel's team you are not allowed to sit there but still what danish used to project himself that he's part of that case and he used to carry all his books and files and you know all the dress up and he used to sit very confidently with a body language that even if somebody used to glare at him he used to they used to feel that he's part of that case only so so the, that was the kind of uh, stuff we had done so he used to sit there and let me tell you the proceeding used to happen on a such a fast scale and obviously it is it is uh, he used to type or by making these uh, on a, on a zero brightness almost 5% brightness of a mobile screen just imagine how dark it will if you if you'll turn it to a 5% so on a dark screen without seeing the screen he was typing the entire proceedings and it was live and let me tell you we have crossed close to 780 tweets in 4 to 5 days 780 tweets on a black screen and instantly what was being discussed there it was kind of a record it was not done earlier i mean i have because in my career of 40 years uh, since i've been following all the news and everything i have never seen a live uh, kind of a hearing on twitter so that was like for the first time it happened and people think that it was quite easy it was not easy at all because what was being discussed and then you have to translate in a easy language and without a spelling mistakes in 780 tweets there is only tweet two spelling mistakes spelling mistakes if i am saying there why so 5% is, sorry i got to ask why 5% 5% mobile screen yeah why did he do only why yeah, did he so, turn his brightness so, down yeah so 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 the the advocates which are sitting on left or right should not get a feel that this guy is reporting okay. live otherwise they would have complained it to the uh, to the uh, <laughs> honorable judge that somebody is sitting on the front uh, front uh, row and is typing okay, okay, is okay, doing okay, a live okay. update on twitter mm. right so that is the kind of uh, effort which has gone into it and trust me that was actually a turning point for us because people in india not just in crypto mm. community but internationally mm. people were following that case on twitter and i think kudos to uh, the effort of danish and kudos to the entire team at crypto kanun because since we have our uh, team where they t- they line up everything they do we are a regulatory office where uh, under the banner fintech lawyers where we have a team they were they used to line up things they used to get the insider information that today what is going to happen how it is going to happen at what time the judge is coming everything used to be lined up and then danish used to go and sit and type that thing i think that was that was amazing wow what a gargantuan effort <laughs> my goodness so that, that oh so that <laughs> was even, now if you if you uh, if you tell me to repeat it again we i 
I really, I'm not sure that we might be able to do that. It, at times what happens that, you know, uh, even you at times wonder that how you were able to do that. If mm. today I have to repeat that, if today Danish has to repeat that, I'm not sure that we might be able to repeat that because that was not an easy task at all. It's, it's our passion. We wanted to, what if we wouldn't have done it, let me tell you, let me tell you what that, what, what that live reporting has done, Sunny. What has happened now? People saw that the questions which were asked by RBI and how well Mr. Ashim Sood replied, right? The answers. So that confidence, that energy translated into a you know law of attraction. I believe in that. So when millions of people were, were hoping for a for a positive outcome, that played a major role. And now that hope, that hope that the result will be in our favor, that hope was only possible if they were able to see that what was happening live inside the courtroom. So that positivity, that case turned into a positivity and people started hoping that that law of attraction happened because I tell you, it's on record, RBI doesn't lose, loses cases easily. If you check the record, I mean, past one decade, they must might not have lost more than four cases. And there was no hope at all. But the way uh, the case was fought, kudos to Mr. Nishat and Desai, the law firm Nishat and Desai, Mr. Ashim Sood. It was such, in fact, we had tears. So when when, when the case uh, came in, uh, the judgment came in, I, I personally, I had tears in my eyes. Danish had tears in his eyes. The first call I remember, I called up Namish. Namish was crying. I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not. So somewhere that passion... Because, you know, our families have also sacrificed a lot. In, in India, uh, you know, there is a taboo. So what happens that uh, if people look at you, if you're dealing in cryptocurrencies, it's still, now to, things have uh, changed a lot. But in 2017, 2018, when we started, when this RBI ban was happening, when you used to talk about crypto or Bitcoin, people used to look at you with a different kind of a attitude, perspective. And our families and everybody was worried. I don't know, that's, that percolated into tears that we got a little emotional that, wow, finally, that feeling of proud called up my wife. I said, now, whenever you discuss crypto with that, what your husband does or how, you know, so what is, is it safe? This is it. This is the day. Just remember that. So that is, that is how things change for all of us, not just for us, but for everybody who's dealing in crypto in India. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm a bit speechless, which rarely happens. Um, yeah, I was going to say, so, you know, some people, they need to see it to believe it. Yeah. But then there are others who believe it before they see it. Yeah. Yeah. And so you guys squarely fall into that latter um, category. So, yeah, so I, I, I love that. You know, Nishit, uh, Nishit I was talking to Namish, uh, Naimish, sorry, uh, recently yeah, Naimish. We, did a, we did a call, we did a video as well, and we'll be releasing that soon. Okay. And, uh, and I was telling him about, you know, how, how I met uh, Surreal, uh, Nishit's son, back in December 2013. Okay. At, a, at an event in, in Bangalore that we did called the Global Bitcoin Conference at the Sheraton. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was myself and Satvik, we had all organized the event. And, and one of the highlights of that event was launching Unocoin. And, mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of that event, uh, I was actually living in Bombay at the time because I was working for, uh, it's a long story, but uh, I was working for a, a Silicon Valley based company called Buttercoin that was backed by Google Ventures and whatnot. So I was, I was flying back to Bombay and on that kind of trip, that car ride and the, the flight back to Bombay, Surreal and I, we just sat beside each other and he just told me about his father. And, uh, and the next morning, all of us, Satvik, or we all went and met mm. Nishibai and Oh my God, there will be books written about that man uh, just based on what he did for Bitcoin. But, you know, maybe, maybe even all the other hundreds of things that that man has done. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no he doubt is about that. a legend. And I remember the first, time I, the first time I met Nishid, he was literally schooling us on Bitcoin. Mm. You know what I mean? And the man is just so forward thinking and so calm and, and you know, his yeah. help. And, you know, he's a shareholder in Unocoin. Um, 
and has been, you know, one of our biggest advocates uh, since day one. And so, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I definitely have a lot of newfound respect for, for lawyers too in this whole process. You That's know, amazing. there's a lot of really That's good amazing. ones out there. Um, okay, so I was just going to keep kind of going. I, I had another, I mean, if you if you want to switch up the, the gear here and do something a di bit different, we can, but I'm loving asking you these questions. Um, no, no, my... I, I, when I'm, lo I'm loving answering this. In fact, I, I'm telling... There are a couple of things which not people don't know. So there, there are many things which I'll speak today, which which I think will be first time. Uh, I have, we haven't spoken about these facts earlier on any platform because uh, these things are very close to our heart and we wanted to tell it to somebody who, who really, you know. <laughs> so I mean, it, yeah. Uh, so there, yeah, so there yeah. are a couple of things which we, because it's a heart out talk. I want this to keep it like heart to heart. I, yeah, there's nothing yeah, to hide. for sure, for sure. Uh, well, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm open to going in any direction you want, but what my, I only ask, you know, uh, yeah. I only ask four questions, right? So what's your story? What's your company's project story? Yeah. My third question is, is, and you know, you can take it um, towards like the Bitcoin or crypto at large, whatever you want to apply it to. But what is one, you know, it's like Peter Thiel's question, right? I don't know if you've heard of it, but what is one truth that you believe uh, that, you know, most others so I ask it in two ways. One is uh, within the Bitco Bitcoin community that they would disagree with you on. And the second would be uh, the world at large, right? So, you know, what's something that you believe to be true? So, so for example, you know, three years ago, you could have said Bitcoin where the whole world didn't believe you, but now they're kind of like coming on board, I guess you could say to some extent. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious to know. So, so again, you know, what's one thing that you believe to be true that most others within, let's start with first the Bitcoin question. So within the Bitcoin, or if you want to say within the crypto community, um, you know, would disagree with you on. Is that too hard of a question? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's way too hard, actually. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so basically, what happens that, you know, uh, we, we, a lot of people in India still think that, you know, for Bitcoin to flourish. So the ideal scenario is when we when we talk about regulation and when, when we talk about law, so then we also talk about things which are good for the country, right? And which are which which so it cannot happen that Bitcoin will grow in isolation. It will never happen. So all the Bitcoiners or crypto community will not go to a their own private island somewhere in Antarctica or Pacific Ocean or nearby Goa, it won't happen. So if you have to grow, if crypto has to grow, crypto has to grow in the sovereign boundaries of the of various countries which are there in the world, right? And it will never happen that Bitcoin is growing and the government doesn't know that this industry is growing and Bitcoin is growing in numbers. People are coming in numbers and government will not be interested. Government at every now, even today, every government in every nation is interested in what is happening, right? Some are silent. Some are only watching it. Some are embracing it. Some are feeling threatened, but everybody is now interested in it, right? And eventually, I want to tell people that, you know, when we talk about regulation, most of the people, there are a couple of people, in fact, the majority of the community thinks that, you know, regulation is not good for crypto. And I tell them that, you know, if things have to grow, you know, you need, you should be very focused and very particular about, you know, your, how you are dealing in crypto, right? Otherwise, if you will not take care of it, government has still not come up with regulation in India. Government is still not clear about it. So you yourself need to take responsibility and do stuff which is like legitimized, which is legal, right? So let me tell you, let me give you a fair, fair bit of an example, right? First of all, we are the first platform we started advocating that if you are in profits, right, you should deposit tax on that. Even if there is no clear tax law, even if there is no clear guidelines, IT department is least bothered. If you have made profits, you should, you know, uh, deposit taxes. So for clearing those answers that why we feel so, 
we bought you know a lot of uh, chartered accountants on our platform and we we today we have a separate platform we have a complete dedicated service called tax set crypto so if somebody wants to avail that service can you know uh, and email their entire case so pe- people become unhappy the, the moment you talk about taxation they say no 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 there is no regulation first regulate then come and collect tax that is not how that is not how things gonna you know Jim. second we are the first platform who always tell people that try and register nominee thing on the platform we 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 actually pushed the crypto exchanges in india to to do nominee to introduce nominee this thing so uno coin already has it i think uh, on from day one they have it and uh, then there are a lot of couple of other exchanges who started introducing it so we always encourage people to do that then we also encourage people to go through exchanges which are kyc enabled so tomorrow they they won't find any difficulty and try to maintain the record of that we recently tied up uh, uh, tied up with an with a taxation platform where you just need to upload bare tax where you need to upload your documents and you it will it will calculate your taxes and and stuff so so truth is that we try and encourage people to do to uh do or whenever they purchase you know do whenever they deal in crypto they try we encourage them to deal it in a legitimized way that makes people unhappy at times but in a longer run they will realize that they will not be in, in trouble because sooner or later whenever even if the regulation so there are two outcomes one is that regulation might get delayed and regulation might happen there will never be a case that regulation will never come we all know that it might get delayed but the delayed part is a little scary also it makes us more responsible as well in our dealing in, in crypto because at the end of the day nobody wants to be pushed behind bars or nobody wants to be you know uh, penalized so a lot of people say why you talk about regulation why you talk about taxes let the government sleep we are any any which ways we are making profits in defy bulls and bears and stuff like that we never talk about this you know trading tips crypto kanun has never given a trading tip so so that is what people are interested in at that so this obviously this industry is maturing and we sooner or later they will realize that you know if you they are dealing in crypto they need to do it they need to deal in it in a in a responsible way that is what our objective has been from day one Wow, that's that's fascinating. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. And uh, and by the way, uh, in Canada, they they on the Canada.ca website, they have a page on Bitcoin and taxes yeah. and how you should be paying your taxes and yeah. and uh, and yeah, and that's something that definitely, definitely, you know, companies should be doing. That's something that people should be doing. Um, and and yeah i think you know a lot of people think it's it's some sort of like escape from the traditional financial system you know it's 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 not it's not it's uh, it's, 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 it's it's i see it as more like as a as a measuring stick um it's like a measuring stick that 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 can that gives humanity a chance of keeping tabs yeah. on you know the monetary unit that we use to to commerce between one another right and and yeah. so now for example you know even if money is being printed for example at scale in lots of countries right like um like the the money supply is being expanded but with bitcoin you know that okay that money supply is not going to expand there's you know 21 million that will ever come and you know it's <clears throat> and, and so i think those 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 things are are marvelous marvelously important and so but okay so so very very fascinating i i agree with you i think each country will will come up with their own regulations as well um i i also think that and and this isn't like me advocating for this right this is just me being a realist and 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 knowing kind of so, a little bit yes yeah. i was going to say is it like globally as well that there are governments of governments if you will like the IMF and you know things like travel rule and fatf that i think more people are starting to talk about more um but i don't see enough discussion within the crypto community and we need to recognize that it's not just about winning you know these these battles at the gr- on the ground there are also regulators of regulators and and those are the the discussions now that are happening and and people need to get more involved in that and it's a bit opaque in terms of how you do that and and that's you know concerning for me but it is what it is yeah but anyways you were going to ask something i think or say something so so basically uh, our job is to make people aware about their responsibilities 
about how they should do things right way right we try and caution people on various aspects and on various other things where at times we they take it for granted that okay fine this crypto we don't need to you know we are rebellions so we try to control that energy though it shouldn't be uh, controlled it should it should be a free flowing we just try to give them a direction that okay fine this is this is how it, this thing should be done so there are a lot of people who come up and say that this exchange is not doing this thing the right way this exchange is not doing this thing the right you should raise an issue we say this industry is maturing they will make make mistakes right and we are not here as a watchdog to control things right we are here to give directions to things right and crypto is something where people need to be self responsible they need to they need to do their own research their own homework because the basic uh, what is the basic structure of crypto it's that you know basic structure is not your keys not your crypto not your bitcoin so similarly what does that what does what is that reflection that reflection is that you need to take care of your thing you need to take care you need to be more aware about your dealings you need to take control of of your situation your finances your you need to be in charge of your uh, possessions so that is how we want people to understand that here nobody is going to come and save uh, may, you know save you from uh, from the problems you need to yourself be more aware and take uh, corrective actions so that is that is what is our role uh, 100% here. 100% agree um and, and then and then i kind of my my second or my last question on that last question was mm. which was that you know aside from let's say even bitcoin just to change gears a little bit you know are there you know we're living in unprecedented times as well right like aside from bitcoin i'm saying like most people are dealing with um you know this whole virus and you know lockdowns and and mm-hmm. it's just it's just a kind of a crazy place so i'm curious do you do you have any uh thoughts or beliefs that are maybe a bit you know um outside of the norm with relation to what's happening in the world today and you know you don't have to answer if you don't feel comfortable but i'm just curious uh <laughs> so to be honest uh, a lot of people in my own family they ask me this question that uh you know why you want to why you want to enter into an industry which is not regulated which is still new and uh, you are not a techie right and you are giving your whole you have decided to give your whole life to this space uh, you know so whenever i talk to my wife and i say now i am i've reached 40 and uh, i think from here on i have decided what i want to do and which industry i want to be with so she she asked me this question that what will happen to your previous experience which you have achieved in media and you know why you want to kill that why why i don't you think so that uh, you should take advantage of that experience and move on with another media industry i said now i don't want to be with another media company i want to create media maybe for an for an industry so what is better out of these two so she she is very supportive she says i know you from day one if you have decided to do that you, you'll do that and i tell you the most fascinating thing about this industry is i believe in satoshi vision if somebody has to understand this industry one should understand satoshi satoshi knew that the that there are going to be problems after 2008 right and covid is one of them so covid is not is is not something that we are not new to pandemic has a cycle so it repeats itself in 25 years another then again 25 it's not that the covid is the last pandemic which has happened there will be another pandemic in another couple of years because of various various other factors which are happening i am not getting to that but pandemic is one of the scenario which which as a human we will continue to face and these are the challenges we will continue to face in another couple of years as well what was happening that it came sooner than expected so every nation on this planet was not prepared was not prepared at all so everybody knew that that there is going to be a time when there there will be an economic fail out there will be an economic failure there will be a time when most of the countries will be doing only one thing and that is what money printing every nation <laughs> on this planet right now is doing one thing they are not controlling covid what they are doing they are going back to their factories fiat factories and they are printing money so they are they are giving stimulus they are giving free money they are giving free butter free bread free this thing for how long so covid has exposed them 
Now imagine, Satoshi knew this, that there will be a time. It came a little sooner. And he gave the entire world a solution, right? Now, obviously, that solution is that solution is something which won't be favored by people who are in power because this is anti power, entire power. Now, this is this is this solution is for people. This solution is not for a king. This solution is not for an autocratic leader. This is for people. Now, imagine Satoshi that if you if you understand his life, if you understand his mission, in spite of the fact that Satoshi has not written a book, if you just close your eyes, just imagine that individual, just imagine that person. You know, at times I talk so much about Satoshi in my family that they know, I think you know Satoshi. I mm -hmm. just imagine that there is a guy, selfless guy who wanted to write a code, who, who knew that what was coming, who wanted people to, who wanted pe the prosperity of people, who wanted freedom for people, who want, who actually gave a solution to, to governments as well. But he, he didn't, he knew that he, if he will go and take, take that solution to people, people won't embrace it. And so he he went away from the scene, came up with a code, a solution, and which is now like a revolution now, and every government, everybody is accepting, embracing it. So to be honest, I am more inspired by Satoshi. And during this COVID time, I think the, the way governments have been exposed, I give you my example at the age of 40, if I can redefine my career, if I can see a career in it, I think crypto if embraced by nations is going to throw a lot of opportunities for millions and billions of people now just imagine sunny in our industry only how many kind different kind of people we require we require people in it we require people in software we require people in media we require as youtubers content writers we ua xi designers you know, in IT also, there are blockchain developers, then there are uh, cyber security experts, there are wallet providers, that, then you have a complete business development team, which you were he you heading at Kraken, you might have got a huge team under your belt, then there were various other departments. So just imagine that how much, um, uh, you know, op the opportunity will come in this industry. So I think governments have been exposed. Governments doesn't know how to uh, deal with the situation. And from here on, even if uh, they, they are, if even if they are able to control, maybe come up with a vaccine, may, let's imagine that. So the, if vaccine will come, they'll try to sell the story that now things are under control. Stock exchanges are moving up, come back to us. Gold will go down as usual. And people will still, you know, be blinded by fake promises and they will still again go back. But this time around, the story is a little different. There are more people who are not going to believe in that story. So who are those people? Those are the people who will find for go for an alternative. So gold is seeing that reflection. And similarly, crypto is going to t get benefit uh, out of that. And uh, with numbers showing you, if you talk to, uh, you know, any exchange in India, everybody is saying that there is a huge interest, uh, you know, which is, which is uh, they are witnessing in the past six months, the kind of registrations which are happening they are they are not able to handle the rush of registrations which are happening on that so i think that volume uh, which is which is coming on the exchanges that interest level which is coming on exchanges is amazing and i think future is uh, future is definitely amazing for 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 crypto awesome oh that's that's great that's great okay and then maybe just like my final final question is is, is there a question that i that you wish i would ask you that i didn't ask <laughs> is there a question that you think doesn't get enough airtime that you think could serve others maybe um you know i'm just curious is there anything that you think is top of mind on that front i think i've uh you have uh, i've told you the most of most uh, part of our story so so i think people at times now people ask us uh, uh what next are you going to remain on twitter and youtube uh why don't you come up with an exchange why don't you come up with a with a website? Maybe we, we even don't have a website today. So so our our objective is I don't know people at times when I tell them that the reason which I am going to tell you now before I tell you people think that you know they are why they are so good why they are so fair <laughs> and that is also a hard feeling to explain that why that if you are good. 
people people tend to you know raise question that why they are so so me and danish are happy doing what we are doing right now right and our objective of coming into this industry was clear that we wanted to help people we wanted to get the right information we wanted to spread the right information number one now since this industry is taking a lot of time lot of our energy and effort because running a two social media platform is a responsible game altogether so we thought let, let's okay let's uh, do uh, you know let's start a revenue model to this as well so so whenever since i was in media for the past 15 years so that mind works as per media sales and i was into sales and marketing so that experience helped me understand understand one thing that if you have built up something legitimate people will find value in it right so we started approaching uh, uh, people with a, who were running a reg- legitimate platforms so various exchanges and they actually were genuinely interested in our proposal and we started a revenue model through that one thing i'm proud of that on every alternate day we do get a proposal from a coin or an exchange that they say okay fine tweet about us or make a video review video we don't do that till date we have not even touched a double digit in terms of promoting companies so it's still i think close to nine companies where we have worked with imagine in 3 years we have worked with nine two years two and a half years we have worked with only nine companies so that's the way of selection we do that's the kind of selective we are in our whole this thing and people are happy people that's the kind of uh, because uh, with great power comes great responsibility so we are very fair in in selecting our projects how we want to do that and uh, so that has really all that has helped us generate revenue also plus we do have our full fledged regulatory offices i tell you uh, a very some examples of how different kind of cases we are handling on the ground because that side is not visible on media so danish is handling lot of crypto cases so we are expert in crypto frauds nobody can handle i can proudly say that we have solved crypto fraud cases right so what is happening that whosoever is a crypto fraud victim they come to us we try to solve that now that part is a when 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 i say crypto fraud and then and when i say making a crypto regulatory framework regulatory framework is made in a ac cabin uh whether you know ac cabin and a thought process and at your own wins and fancy you know you want to do with okay but when you are dealing in crypto frauds you have to deal with sho thanedar you know thanedar means a cop and meeting a cop in india and explaining you know bitcoin to a cop in a in a system is such a tough job is such a tedious job that even you know i can't just tell you in that so i mean the acps the assistant commissioner of police the ias judges of various district courts where danish goes it is it's, it's it is such a task to explain them that fraud has happened so what is happening that when since there is no clarity in regulation in india the the guys who are doing scams are taking advantage of the situation they know that the the system doesn't know about crypto the it is very difficult for people to register a complaint when you go to a police station in delhi not forget about bihar and uttar pradesh by the way in a police station in delhi and mumbai when people go their their complaints are not getting registered because the police department feels that it is illegal even they are not aware so first you have to make them aware so so when they don't file a uh, an fir we have to go to superintendent of police assistant commissioner of police and we have to convince people in different ladder in different departments just imagine the pain but that's something which is all, which is which we love to do that and we have solved fraud cases from canada fraud cases uh, people have been uh, defrauded so innocent people from canada invest uh, sent money to indian exchanges uh, in india 
who vanished from the scene so we are fighting cases for canadians we are fighting cases for australians we are fighting cases for people in africa we are fighting cases for people in delhi uh, from haryana so different various states so that's that's again that's a different stream that's a huge that's a complete different vertical of crypto kanun so that's the kanun side and what you see on media is crypto side so we it's it's a beautiful combination of that and we are happy doing it people say that now you've earned a lot of credibility you should come on you should come in uh, in an exchange and uh, we are not interested genuinely we we because we are enjoying what we are doing i always believe that if you're enjoying doing something and you feel that you're happy doing something right right now i'm enjoying this conversation and even if you'll call me tomorrow i'll come back again you call me next week i'll come back again because this is something i enjoy doing it i enjoy talking to people i enjoy uh, sharing my vision so so that's that's something which we are enjoying and if if we'll continue to enjoy it for a longer period of time i think we'll be happy hmm. and if you if if you'll feel that you want to do something we'll definitely uh, do that but provided will will enjoy doing that so that is more important love it that <clears throat> that's the perfect measure of uh, whether you're on the right path or not you know i i want to touch on one thing that i i'm also you know i think about a lot um which is you know throughout your story you kind of explained how you know at one point or through some process or not you figured out that bitcoin is the one right and by the way uno means one in spanish my wife yeah. is from colombia yeah. okay. that's why we thought okay. bitcoin was the one you know bring bitcoin right. to billions was our initial mission and so um so on one side of the spectrum you have this like beacon of light right B- bitcoin and then on the other side you have like straight up like ponzi scheme artists ruja mm-hmm. you know what coin you have like people trying to steal money from people but in between is where i spend a lot of my mind thinking right is like there are a lot of projects that come off as being innovative right mm-hmm. and to the average public you could even read their white papers and say whoa this this is this is going to be the next bitcoin which is everyone's in search for but how, like i guess what are the axes the axioms that you look at when you're evaluating like if you could like i said on a quadrant list like bitcoin on the top right top up and right and then 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 you know the, the hardcore scam artists but then you've got all these as many refer to as shit coins you know you've got all these you know many people are even like i'm i'm really from canada i i kind of saw ethereum's birth like from with my own eyes uh literally happening in front of me and to this day you know there's a lot of people who who kind of don't like love the ethereum vision so i guess i'm just curious to know from your per- and, and by the way i don't know when we do list ethereum we did um but but i'm just curious to know your perspective mm-hmm. what is kind of like how do you how do you draw that that spectrum and how do you help people navigate that you know that thought process to to get them to realize something is a scam because you don't want to just have to rely on you or me or someone right like you want them to have their own tools so that when they discover something brand new tomorrow that they can be like no 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 this smells bad so what 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 are the do you, do you know what i'm saying like what are the things that you're looking for um so so basically what was happening uh in crypto right you can't change many things you know at a, at one moment so change will happen gradually it will happen slowly and slowly and slowly and i tell you now what you have asked a very good question let me first tell you sunny so what was happened what was happening because since i am myself a crypto uh, fraud victim right as i told you in the beginning so what what has happening happened from 2016 to 2020 now i'll give you a fair bit of an idea so what was happening in 2017 was an ico regime period ico time right so what was happening that media crypto media meant couple of youtubers right not just in india around the world globally there were youtubers who were promoting you know scams who were promoting coins by in you know what 2000 3000 dollars and they were getting 200 500 jo whatever up is for for even 100 dollar people were willing to talk about those those icos right so crypto media meant only youtubers fake uh, so they were promoting fake projects they were promoting fake schemes fake scams and everything what happened when you didn't had any legitimate player in the media side people thought this is media 
right so till the time if i tell you that sunny this is the best apple right till the time you haven't eaten a better apple than that you will continue to believe that this is the best apple isn't it so mm-hmm. what was happening in india and around the world that there were youtubers i'm not saying i am the best youtuber right now but what was happening during that regime in 2017 and 2018 there were youtubers there was and who were who were promoting different kind of scams and coins people by nature are they tend to believe uh, you know youtubers right and we all know with the internet and the way internet is growing the people tend to people are shifting from a linear tv to influencer marketing and we know that influencer marketing is growing why it is growing because people think that this is this is the truth this is true this guy is truthful this guy is me this guy is looking normal he is sitting at home he is normal i tend i can believe him i can relate with him that's the way the influencer now have a have a huge power and but they are not thinking themselves to be as responsible as they should be after crypto kanuns arrival on the scenes in 2018 and not just me the couple of more as well in india we had decided one thing that we are not going to promote any scam coin or a fresh project even if it is good even if it is backed by uno coin coin based binance we are not going to promote it simple we wanted to keep it simple because we knew that something which is not in existence right has a chance of failure or success no matter how good that project is so to give you a very classic example we knew that tezos was a amazing project in 2017 i was personally invested in that right i bought tezos during the ico time but i that tezos got into a legal issue so there are few things which are not in your control right and eventually it came on scene quite late right but till the time that money was stuck in tezos right so that is how things evolved over the period of time so we wanted to first change the way media is being uh, projected in india so we we try to first of all clean our image clean the crypto media space we by presenting an example that how, this is how media should be handled this is how media should go in the country right this is how media should be operated right and slowly and steadily what happened that seeing our success because this has not happened earlier because in two and a half years our community has grown to 43000 people in two years time two years time is a very lesser time when you see other youtubers or other media outlets which have grown this uh, got this number in 9 years 8 years 7 years 6 years right so this phenomenal growth helped the existing uh, media outlets to to review their strategy and when you do good thing so good thing is infectious so what happened people started following that path as well i am not saying i am the i am the leader in that or i am the game changer in that but i am saying if me or couple of one or two got changed so even suddenly people started realizing yeah okay this industry is going to stay and eventually we all of us will end up making huge money let me be, let me tell you so today as a youtuber i might not be earning as good as an exchange in spite of the fact that i have a similar kind of an impact on the community but eventually as a media outlet i know that in another 8 to 10 years uh, uh, ahead just imagine the kind of numbers i'll have on my platform so it will be as good as a media platform uh, you know we all know joe rogan what is the value which spotify was able to find in joe rogan right so as a podcaster he was able to and we recently came to know that uh, an influencer in uh, in hong kong launched her ipo initial public offering of an influencer so that's the kind of powers media holds so what we did we first of all tried to be responsible watching us other media outlets try try to follow that now if i will go and start bashing start talking against about altcoins and these are shit coins and these are 
what we do rather we have a different strategy what we do we try to educate people that whenever you are dealing in altcoins or uh, or uh, or any other project just be careful just be these are the factors that you should be you know taking care of so we try to educate on those on those lines but more than that what i want that the media outlets which are there in the country right now should not promote any just another coin right they should even there are people still there are telegram groups who are giving tips right people people get wrecked in those tech tips right they don't know if this if this going to work or not so i think still there are things which are happening but now the scale of those things have come down a lot yeah 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 beautiful no i i agree with you i agree with you i'm just uh, i definitely consider myself a big bitcoin maximalist and and that's cost me the money you know I, i'm sure i could have made a lot more if i wasn't but it helps me sleep at night sunny i tell you i started as a bitcoin maximalist right i started as a bitcoin maximalist then i said no way i i if i i am in crypto i should also you know try and explore the trading part if i am not doing that i cannot say that i am 100% in crypto then i started doing trading and then i got into altcoins and then i again burned hand in uh, altcoins i got into icos also i do try i got into defi as well i bought couple of projects in defi without naming them why i continue to do that because when i when i face loss i get that experience right so that that also helps me me and my understanding of that project that also gives me my uh, understanding of the of the of the system mm -hmm. right that what is happening till the time i won't do farming till the time i do won't do steaming or till the time i won't participate in a governance token i won't be able to give that you know perspective that is it good is it bad or is it like you should remain in so people come back to me and ask me what are, what are the coins which you are holding i say i i, I will never disclose that but all i can tell you i started as a maximalist but later on i realized that if i i need to be a, as a media outlet i cannot be you know stuck to one thing i need to have an experience and perspective of entire industry that what is happening around and need to feel and experience it that how it works mm -hmm. so 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 i i traded on uniswap and uh, i traded on metamask and all those defi stuff I, and i continue and i learn the best part is i enjoy learning and i when i learn i experience and when i experience i i can give that perspective to people that okay is it good or is it bad but yeah. yes i am a certain believer in bitcoin and the major holding the major percentages in bitcoin itself like you have 100% maybe mine must be more than 70 75% holding is in bitcoin and i think uh that's that's the future i mean that that's the future and i think uh, no there is no denying in that yeah 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 cool cool um okay i think i i think i got through you know a lot of the big questions that i wanted to ask you um Yeah, I mean at least on our first call, you know, and by the way, one thing I wanted to pick up on, you said that, you know, you'd be open to doing this again. Uh, you know, I I've been as you know pretty quiet now for for a couple of years uh because of a lot of things going on uh in No, I have a question yeah, yeah, yeah. to you. To yeah, yeah, please, please, please. But no, we will. You, I definitely want you to ask the questions. But I was going to say is yeah. also if you want to do in addition to today another time as well next week or yeah. the week after. Um, you know, we just keep the conversation going and then talk about more recent events and. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love to do that because I'm really enjoying this conversation <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah, but please, please, yeah, we we can shift gears if there's any like big you know questions you want to touch on this one. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm, a, I'm an open book. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So so, so sorry. Uh, what did you know about your journey because we have seen you uh, you know on twitter on youtube you've been quite vocal on twitter then there is a there was a time when you got a little quieter on that maybe i for some reasons and we want to understand how uh, your association with uno coin with satvik and all with satvik and harish i mean what to say about harish i mean a uh, lot many people know that harish has been 
a backbone in this RBI versus crypto case. There is one guy who has who has been sleepless uh, during the entire those months. Used to fly at fi- awkward timings, 5 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning just to reach at the Supreme Court. One guy we have seen standing in the court before we arrived in the court was Harish. Let's be be honest, and without any selfies in the Supreme Court, that I am here, I am here, selfless, selfless, no glamour, stuck to the job, and he was there, he was there, supporting us, cheering us, you know, and uh, and I'd be actually tweeted and we told people that who is the real you know face behind this case, and we wanted to give him credit as well, though he's not hungry for credit, he says. The the judgment which he wanted has arrived, but this is again a first step. The ultimate step is that we all need to be together and fight for uh, the the proper regulation. So we, I wanted to understand your association with Uno Coin, how you met these guys, <laughs> what you were doing before Uno Coin, or Uno Coin was the first uh, journey, uh, first step in crypto, or before that you were doing something else as well. Just wanted to understand that. Mm-mm-mm. So so just just to uh, maybe level set. So I, I bought UnoCoin.com on um, GoDaddy, okay. and the reason I I bought UnoCoin is because I was crazy passionate about Bitcoin in 2011, 2012. I was living in India at the time, and I'll maybe rewind and do the whole story. But but my wife, like I said before, is from Colombia, so I'm learning Spanish, and Uno means one, and I thought Bitcoin was the one, and it was just for fun. And, uh, uh, and I ended up meeting Satvik and Harish uh, in, around that time, maybe six months after I started doing my Bitcoin meetups in Bangalore, I met Satvik and then Harish and Abhi at one of our meetups. And we're like brothers from different mothers. I don't know what you want to call us. Like uh, just from the, from the day we all met, we've been, we've just been at it, you know, and then we've tried a lot of things, failed at many things, but uh uh, and the reason I'm doing uh, this, right, the whole like sunny ratio and this and that and trying to get a bit more vocal is is not to put a spotlight on me. It's, it's I mean, at the end of the day, I one of my kind of goals is to help bring a bit of attention to Harish and, and Satvik and what they've done for the community, because I, I feel like a lot of people have forgotten. Uh, so thanks for asking that. So, okay, so my story real quick, and then I'll kind of dovetail into, into this. I won't take too much time. I don't want to bore your, your viewers. Um, okay, but really quick, uh, my parents are from India, from Kolkata. I was born and raised in Canada, okay. in Edmonton, Alberta. So they migrated to, um, they migrated to Canada? Before, I you, before I they were born, born. I, when my dad was 20 right. something. Uh, so I was born in Canada, but we, uh, I, I, I used to visit, we used to visit India mm-hmm. every year growing up, you know, for one month, two months, three months. And, uh, and, and then I even lived in India as a kid while my dad worked in, in, in the oil fields in Kuwait. Anyway, so I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta. I studied electrical engineering. I transferred over to Toronto halfway through. So I've been living in Toronto. I'm also 40 now, more than 40. And so I'm going to turn 41 soon. Yeah. But I, I moved over to Toronto. So I've spent the first half of my life in Alberta and the last half, 15 years of it in in in, in Toronto, with the exception of about maybe four or five years when I when I moved back to India. So my story goes, I, I always had a question, uh, which was, you know, what is money? Uh, you know, we all ask ourselves things like what's religion, what's politics, you know, all these like big questions. And one of the questions I got stuck on was what is money? And I always felt like nobody could give me a straight answer and nobody could tell me what it was, where it came from. But the one thing I knew is is that everybody cared about it, Um, whether it was like, you know, my two-year-old daughter or my 89-year-old grandmother, everybody loved it. Um, And everybody wakes up in the morning early to get it. Everybody goes to sleep late. They get into divorces. They get into wars. My money is what makes the world go round. But when I ask people the simple question, what is money? You know, nobody could answer. And to me, that was always a bit of a red flag. It's like, how could this one thing that everybody cares, different religions in different places, different governments, but the thing that everybody loves and, and it kind of goes after is money. And, you know, it's like oxygen, right? Like when you have it, you're fine. When you don't, you can't even breathe. And so so once I graduated as an engineer, as an engineer, I, I started working at a company. And I just remember there always being more month than money. 
<laughs> you know, at the end of the month, there was always a few days where you're like, oh, I need that paycheck. And so these, these things always bug me. And so I decided to become a financial advisor. Um, you know, I ran my own financial brokerage before in 2005, 2006, and I got all my licenses uh, and all that. And, and the funny thing was at the end of those years, I felt like I understood less about money than I did at the beginning. And I was surrounded by all these people that wore nice suits, used big words, used what they called as math, right? But as an engineer, you know what math is and they're not using it. They're just fooling people with it. And so, so I, and even before that, in one of my co-op terms, I remember I lived with this gentleman. We were just like roommates. We were living in this, you know, up in this oil field in Fort McMurray. And this was, I remember I was getting paid really well, at this great oil company, and I didn't know what to do with the money. And this guy, my roommate convinced me to put my money into drum roll, a Ponzi scheme, right? And so it was almost 18, 17, almost 20 years ago that I had my first encounter with a Ponzi scheme where you're like seeing your money grow and then it disappears and you're like, okay, maybe this life thing isn't so easy after all, you know? Yeah, and and yeah. so so for me, it was, it was always kind of like asking myself and, and asking myself, what is money? Um, at the end of that financial career, I kind of decided I didn't want to be in finance because I felt like everybody was a bit lost. And so I dedicated almost eight years, maybe 10 years of my career to robotics. I traveled the world, helped outfit a lot of the major robotics labs in the world, you know, Stanford, Georgia Tech, U of T, NIT, IIT, M, you name it, I, all of them, I've been inside of them. And uh, I essentially worked for this really cool robot company, robotics company, mechatronics company. In fact, my wife is even a mechatronics engineer. We met okay. in that past lifetime. And then for that job, that Canadian company, I ended up moving out to India in 2011. And okay. it was around then that I discovered Bitcoin became, you know, super obsessed with it. I think it was because I was questioning what money is all the time. And also I had a technical background and I had a bit mm -hmm. of a finance background. It all came together. And then, yeah. you know, when I read Satoshi's vision, as you say, uh, the skies parted. I mean, six months in hibernation, didn't talk, didn't eat, just like, just all I could think about was Bitcoin. And then finally, one fine day, I was, you know, I was watching what was happening in Toronto with Anthony Diorio, like some of the founders behind Ethereum, they were doing meetups. And I was just like, oh, I'm missing out. I'm living in India. Like, and, and so I knew I needed to like connect with other humans. And so I started looking up on meetup, what's going on in Bitcoin. And there was literally just one guy named Benson Samuel. I don't know if you know him, who was doing some, some meetups. I ended up meeting with him and a couple of guys and, and after a couple of months, he said, Sonny, you know, you run this thing. I got a better things to do. So I, I pretty much did. And, and for me, I just knew I wanted to do something in Bitcoin. And I knew I needed people around me because there's no way I was going to do it on my own. And so through those meetups, I met hundreds, if not thousands of people. We would do them every week, every two weeks. And, and the way we did it was we, we did them at the Lila Palace, like, not so, five star, six star, six star, Bangalore. Six star. <laughs> yeah, like amazing, amazing. So people would get patted down, you know, like servers. You know, you have you know, five star hotels in India. They're like heaven. So, which year? Which year you said? 2012, 2011, I think I want to say. 20, it, was, it, was, it was way too early. Way too early in India, 2011. Oh, 20. dude, we got it all started. <laughs> yeah, I of mean, course. Yeah. 2011 I, I, is... 2011 is like way too early. Yeah, and I don't you know, know if we were able to find uh, people here. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter has the search function, so if people don't believe me. They can search my, you know, I was bit tweeting about Bitcoin in 2011, that's, that's but amazing. 2012, I was in full blown meetup mode and just organizing events. And, and and our thinking was this: is that you know, I mean, the only thing I know to be true is science, right? And and the way science works is that you have a hypothesis right? Which is just like a fancy long word for saying an idea. And then you, you essentially run that idea up against the world and you see if that hypothesis sticks or not. And you don't bring emotion into it. You just do it, you know, in a scientific way. So what we started doing is first, my goal was to meet people that were of like mindedness. And so at the time it was, I remember my first meetup, but when I was really doing it myself, it was me, my wife. <laughs> and I told my wife, you know what, you don't have to come anymore. I'll just keep come, come by myself for now. And when I build these up a little bit, you have 10, 15 people, you start coming, then it'll be fun. And that's exactly what happened. We built it up and finally we were doing, you know, big events, but, but, but uh, maybe six months into that kind of doing events, doing events, you know, I was, I was meeting a lot of people, you know, vibing, but 
there was still something missing. And then one fine day at Leela Palace, you know, Satvik, uh, the CEO of Uno Coin today, is, is walked into the to the you know lights like ah like, and he walks in with an entourage of guys like Abi, his brother, you know, and then Sat and Harish and all these guys and and the the point where it clicked for me is is like I, I, I'm you know I'm an engineer, I'm an entrepreneur but my strengths lie more in like ideas, networks, you know, businesses, things like that. Um, but when it comes to like actually writing code, I don't consider myself the best coder. I've had like many jobs and many courses, but I don't consider myself a coder. So I needed to essentially be around people that were far more capable at executing. And that was, you know, kind of the, the start of our mind and suffix relationship. We, I remember in our first meeting, we were literally already talking about, we were like, okay, well, what are the different opportunities, Bitcoin mining? So I remember within a couple of weeks, we had guys flying in New York, flying here, flying there, buying mining equipment, flying back, while setting AC up and, you know, and like, you know, I think we were probably one of the first mining rigs, like proper, you know, establishments awesome. in India. But, you know, I think our 100 Bitcoins or my 100 Bitcoins turned into 30 in that experiment, mm. <laughs> you know, and, or whatever I had at the time. And we just kept running. We did an event. We thought, okay, Bitcoin, just like you are realizing and people are realizing is that mm. this is going to be the future. We knew, we felt that when we discovered it too. And I think a lot of people have a similar experience. So we did the first big, you know, Bitcoin event. Like, uh, so event was one of our ideas. We're like, okay, let's do an event. We, mm -hmm. we grabbed globalbitcoinconference.com. I don't even know if Suffix still has that anymore, but we said, let's do an event. Let's, let's do it at the, at the Sheraton. So in December, 2013, all of our meetups, we'd already done 20, 30, maybe meetups. And like people were coming and we were like getting kicked out of places because there were too many people. So we thought it's time to do a proper event. And, you know, and this wasn't my idea, but a couple of the other guys decided that, hey, let's also invite, you know, regulators, let's because they're going to need to know about this, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to, you know, lawyers, let's invite business people, let's invite, you know, media, let's invite everybody that we can think of, um, and, and get them talking about Bitcoin, so that India is not left behind. And it doesn't take, you know, another 20 years before it gets here, like a lot of the other movements. And, I don't know a lot of people know about this, but you know, we actually invited the RBI and somebody from the RBI showed up at that, at that yeah. event as well. And uh, you know, and you talked about ZebPay, you know, uh, ZebPay wasn't ZebPay then, they had a different service back in the day, right? Called buy, sell Bitcoin. They had something before that even called Mr. Bitcoin, but it had no KYC, it was no platform. It was just a simple one page website, right? Mm -hmm. But still, you know, that was amazing back in the day. And in fact, I remember I called Mahin one day like six months before this event even. And I said, Mahin, I want to come sweep your floors. Like, I, I want to work for you. Like, I love what you're doing. And, you know, Mahin was one of the founders behind ZebPay. And I said, look, yeah. I'll do anything. And and eventually he said, he said, Sonny, you know, why don't you go start a company? Like, you guys seem motivated. You have a team in Bangalore. Like, you know, let's create an industry. Let's not, you know, just work for one another. And, and that was what, there was a final button that we said, me and Satvik said, okay. I mean, Satvik, and by, at that time, Satvik had kind of like, I think five or six programmers for his previous company. Satvik was not only coding from when he was in his diaper, but he was also like an MBA and an entrepreneur that was running a very successful business. And so when I started saying things like, hey, let's invest some money and buy some miners, you know, he didn't bat an eye. He was like, okay, let's, let's figure out the place. Let's get it done. And, and where the events, hey, let's do an event. I could talk about it. I get postponed, but Satvik's like, okay, let's pick a date. Let's get a website. Let's get it done. And that's been the story of our kind of relationship is like, I'm like, okay, let's, there's this crazy idea. Let's think about, let's do this. And these guys are like, okay, like in reality, will it actually, um, you know, come? So I think your question was, you know, how did I meet these guys? I think that covers some of it. We, it was yeah, through yeah, meetups, yeah. It was community building. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is not, so, so this is it. I mean, not many people in India know that how it started. So actually Bitcoin actually started, if Bitcoin would have started in India, it would have, if, Bitcoin has started in 2011. So you are the guys who actually first discussed Bitcoin on a serious platform for the first time. So Unocoin so was the, the first platform, like, you know. Unocoin mm -hmm. is the first platform, but that mm -hmm. vision, that mm -hmm. bringing people together, you were the person who actually initiated that in 2011. You were yeah, the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in people, you know, and that's what I'm hoping to accomplish by Zoom <laughs> but calls not, but, and videos. But yeah, I this agree. Is, this, this is crazy. So I not agree. many people know that. 
I agree. Not yeah. Yeah. One of my like big passions is, is events. I love, I mean, now it doesn't exist anymore, but yeah, I love events. <laughs> I love bringing people together. But, but, if it's, but uh, I tell you, this is events is going to be a big time in India especially because people love, because it, I think uh, post COVID, I think if things get settled down, maybe by say, suppose next year, you should actually start thinking about uh, events. And uh, even I love, uh, events right so i somewhere maybe we, we can synergize our efforts yeah definitely definitely huge fan of events and so it was through mm-hmm. those events and like but i because, just told because you the story event, that i met his son at that event <laughs> right this is crazy the mahin spoke at that event uh and it's all on youtube it was probably 10 viewers but it's all on youtube our, our speeches i used to work and 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 here's a little bit of a side story mm-hmm. i didn't really think, I mean, I wanted to leave my robotics job uh, because I knew Bitcoin was going to be where, where I wanted to go. But I, 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 I'm not like Suffolk where I'm like this, you know, at the time I wasn't like a seasoned, you know, entrepreneur. And so for me, I ended up getting an offer from a company called Buttercoin that was based in Silicon Valley. And they said, hey, come on board and, and do, and they were backed by Google, Y Combinator, blah, blah, blah. And they said, come in, come in, um, you know, head up our business development efforts. So I, believe it or not, even though I started Udocoid, I handed the baby over to Satvik and said, Satvik, you know, let's see what you got. Let's see, build this into something. And I went and worked for Buttercoin. And then when I joined Buttercoin, maybe a year into that effort, uh, Barry Silbert, <laughs> DCG contacted us at Unocoin and said he wanted to put in money. And for me, that was a tipping point as in, I thought this dinky, like no good company thing, website that I, that we came up with, you know, years ago, now the biggest, at least in my view, one of the biggest guys in the space is saying that they want to invest, you know, and, and the funny, even it was even funny with that story because I remember Satvik deleted Barry's email monster twice because he didn't, he thought, who would pay us, who would give us money to, to build a Bitcoin <laughs> business? Like, this guy must be crazy, <laughs> right? He deleted his email. And then finally, Barry wrote back saying, I'm an investor in Coinbase. I'm an investor in BitPay. Like, let's make this happen. But that just goes to show. And, and you know, even when we launched Unocoin at the Global Bitcoin Conference, I told you the week following, we were all in Bombay, you know, celebrating us doing the event. We were with Nishit, the son, this, that. And orders started piling up at Unocoin. And we didn't even realize it because everything we had done till then was mediocre or slash failure, right? Like we did physical Bitcoins, we did mining. All we knew is just how to lose money at that point. But for us, we were still so excited because we were learning, right? Every time, you know, you either you win or you learn, they, they say. So, so we were just learning and we just kept going, okay, that's not maybe for us. That's not for us. That's not for us. And then finally, one day I was maintaining essentially a blog on, on Unocoin, just as like a people would come to our events and we would just, instead of me answering the same question a hundred times, I would just write a little blog, put it there, here, go read it. Oh, where? But the one question we couldn't answer is where do you get Bitcoin? <laughs> people would come and say, I want some Bitcoin. And it was super risky. So we were just like, we need to build a service. And, and that was really the genesis of the idea. And we said, hey, why don't we build something that's responsible, something that's secure, something that has, you know, we know we, we don't, we're not advocates for KYC. You know how many people we have to turn away on our platform because we can't get them through KYC? If we want to bring Bitcoin to billions, why would we be an advocate of that? But we know because we spent time in finance, because we have, you know, where we come from the business mindset that you can't just, you know, circumvent yeah, that, that. And governments are that's coming. What I, uh, exactly. That's, that's what, what I, that's what I was talking about. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's, I don't know. I mean, there, there's amazing. so many stories. That's just the beginning mm-hmm. of it. Like I said, you know, if you're, if you're um, uh, tight for time, I, I would be, you know, like there's a lot, I know you had questions around Kraken, um, you know, your uh-huh. questions around kind of Unocoin. We have lots of stories in between. Hey, look, I said, uh, if you want to do something, you know, next week, yes. if you want to even yes, continue yes, now, I have time, but you tell me what works best for you. So, you tell me. So, so I'll what I'll do, I'll fix up something for next week. Let's and, do that uh, and carry it forward. Okay. Let's carry it. Uh, no, let's Love do it. that. 
Love it, love it. I really, really enjoyed this conversation. Okay, let's stop here. And yeah, we'll make that one, you know, where you kind of drill me a bit. But I really, really appreciate you asking me, or you answering all those questions I asked at the beginning and kind of sharing yeah, your thanks. story. And I was very, very curious to know. And so thank you very much. And, and, thanks, uh, thanks and thank you for thanks everything that you do. Just on a finishing note, anything you want to share with like where people can learn more about you? You said there's a website maybe coming, but you said a, like the Twitter handle, other, yeah. you know, media you know, points for people. So, can... so you people can follow us on Twitter. Uh, so it's at the rate Crypto Kanun. And then on social media also, uh, on YouTube also, we are there with Crypto Kanun. So you can put it in maybe, uh, you can just name it. You can find us in, on YouTube. And we are also there on Telegram as well. Yeah, and it's Crypto, Crypto, and then Kanun is with a K. K right? K-A-N-O-O-N. Awesome. Awesome. So, so... Uh, Okay, so I guess next week we'll reconnect. Uh, yeah, yeah, just we'll schedule me whenever everybody. you're ready. This was a delight. Yeah. So thank you very much. Okay, we'll talk later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.